Open up your Bibles, please, to the book of 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm going to show you three easy cases to disprove water baptism for salvation. Now, this one is going to be pretty unbelievable, so I want you to pay attention here. What's going to happen is that there are people who insist that water baptism is not a good work, is not a work of salvation. Now, I don't know why they would think that, but they actually think that. So, you're going to see Church of Christ members, you're going to see different cults and religions cl claiming, oh yeah, I believe salvation by grace and faith alone, not by works. And then when you say, okay, so then church membership, living a good life, cleaning up all your sins, etc., etc., you might hear them agree with you. Yeah, we don't believe in those things for salvation, only faith in Christ. And you might assume, oh, they're saved like we are. Don't do that. What's important to do is this. When you list the good works, I always mention this. I always include water baptism as well. So that is extremely important. You want to include water baptism with that. Make sure you include water baptism in the list of good works. That way you can see them saying, well, you know, I don't know. And when you hear them say that, then you caught them and they believe water baptism is included with salvation. So, we're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. So, what we're going to do is that we're going to look at clear-cut verses where water baptism cannot save you. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All right, now this is very important is that this is going to be funny, folks. This verse, I'm going to show you this verse is used to disprove water baptism. But guess what? This verse is used to prove water baptism for salvation. So, uh, why is it the opposite, I'm going to argue? Well, I'll explain. First of all, the reason why they insist it is water baptism for salvation is because it says the light figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. See that? So they assume right here that, that water baptism saves us. It provides us salvation. But the easy debunking is this. Look at the parentheses. We believe even the parentheses are inspired by God. Amen. I mean, if that parentheses wasn't there, then you change the whole doctrine. What's the parentheses? Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Here's the thing. The reason why baptism saves you is that it doesn't save you from the filth, the filthy sins of your flesh. It saves you in having a good conscience toward God. That's why I'm sure all of you can understand that's why you got baptized, right? You want to have a good conscience about that toward God, correct? That's the reason why. It saves you to have a good conscience. It's not to wash away your sins. Now, they might insist that, no, you're just interpreting right there. No, that verse says the filth of the flesh, right? Let's see what the Bible says. Go to the book of 2 Corinthians. Go to the book of 2 Corinthians. Let Scripture interpret Scripture, and then it'll explain to you what the filth of the flesh is. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, chapter 7. And we'll look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. The filth of the flesh is defined as your sins. There is no doubt it has to do with your sins. It's funny that the Church of Christ will argue that water baptism washes away your sins. It's for the forgiveness of sins. No, 1 Peter 3.21 says it has nothing to do with your sins. Because look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and what? Spirit. Perfecting what? Holiness in the fear of God. Do you think filth of the flesh means getting a bath? No, it's... It has nothing to do with hygiene. There's no doubt. It has to do with your sins in perfecting holiness. There's absolutely no doubt about that one. So then when you return to our main text, 
we can see 1 Peter 3.21, it actually doesn't confirm water baptism for salvation. It actually disproves it. Now we're going to look at a second case right here. So we saw one case right here. Now let's look at a second case right here. We're going to look at the book of Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. This verse definitely proves that water baptism is a good work for salvation. It is a good work for salvation. No, it's not. Well, look at Matthew chapter 3. Okay, so we saw one case right here. Now let's look at the second case right here. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 3. And then once you have Matthew 3, I want your second hand to go to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. We're going to look at two passages. We're going to look at Matthew 3 and Titus 3. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 3 and Titus 3. We're going to look at these two passages where we prove that water baptism is a good work for salvation. Now, this verse is famously used in Titus chapter 3 verse 5. This verse is famously used to prove good works. That good works cannot save. That's what Titus 3 5 is for. It's a famous verse that good works cannot save. We're going to look at Titus 3 verse 5. The Bible says right here, not by what? Works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. So that's important. Notice right here, it's not by our works of righteousness that saves us. It's by God's mercy. Now remember that. Works of righteousness which we have done. That's a good work for salvation. Go to Matthew 3. Matthew chapter 3. And look what Jesus says. I think Jesus should be the one who defines what's a good work. Right? Let's look at Matthew chapter 3. Let's see what Jesus had to explain himself right here. Look at verse 14. But John forbade him. Why? Saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. So John doesn't want to water baptize Jesus. But Jesus insists in doing this water baptism. Why? Look at the next part. And Jesus answering, so he's answering his question uh, about baptism, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all what? To fulfill all righteousness. Boom. So notice right here, this verse automatically proves that water baptism is a work of righteousness. Otherwise, Jesus Christ wasn't doing a good work for the Father right then and there, right? So this proves right here, Titus 3, 5, Matthew 3, 14 to 15, that water baptism is definitely a good work right here. Last case we're going to look at. The last case we're going to look at right here. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. This is the most famous verse. The most famous verse. And you probably want to remember this one. 1 Corinthians 1. The most famous verse against water baptism for salvation. Nearly every... Independent Baptist uses this passage because it's so simple. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You know what this verse proves? This verse proves right here that, this, that water baptism is not the salvation gospel. Let me repeat again. It says right here in this passage, water baptism cannot be the gospel. Have you ever heard people saying, what is the gospel? Acts 2.38, getting baptized. Have you ever heard people saying that the gospel is repent, believe, confess, and get baptized? So they think that water baptism is a gospel. No, 1 Corinthians 1.17. Look at this. It's distinguished. For Christ sent me, Paul saying Christ did not send him to what? Baptize. Paul said Christ didn't send him to baptize, but contradicting, distinguishing from, but to preach the what? Gospel. Look at that. So Paul, he realizes that the gospel of Jesus Christ is distinguished from water baptism. So water baptism cannot be the gospel. Here's another troubling thing. Why would Paul say that Christ did not send him to baptize people if his mission was to make sure that souls get saved? Then would Paul be responsible for damning many souls to hell? Absolutely. 
But that's not his goal. His goal is to make sure souls get saved, and they're saved by the gospel, not by water baptism. I mean, look at this. Look at the wording of Paul. This, this is troubling if you think water baptism is salvation. Look at this. Look at verse 14. I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius. Are you kidding me? Paul would be grateful that he didn't baptize them so that they can burn in hell. <laughs> if you think water baptism is salvation. There is no way, there is no way that water baptism is included in the salvation gospel in Paul's mind. There is absolutely no way. So these are the three key verses that you can use. A famous passage another, other people use as well, which is a thorn on the side, you can use this one too, is the book of Luke, the thief on the cross. What did he do? All he did was he just realized as a repentant sinner that he confessed to Jesus Christ that he believed that that was the way. That was the real king. That was the savior. So Jesus Christ, what did he say? Oh, well, you got to get down off the cross and get water baptized. No. He said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise as soon as he confessed that. And that matches with Romans 10, 9. When you confess out of your mouth, out of your heart, that you believe on Jesus Christ for salvation, you're, you're sealed, you're saved. So you can use that one. 